It's not an evangelistic meeting. It's not a meeting to get people to the church or even into salvation. That may surprise you. And don't let anybody go out and say, you know, our pastor is not preaching the gospel anymore. Who said that? You are about to watch a very interesting video. A video that holds a lot of lessons for you and I. I would like us to watch it together and after we should talk about the lessons that we can deduce from it and what you can do with those lessons. All right, let's watch it together. James chapter 1 verse 22. It says, but be ye doers of the word. Hold on there. Be ye doers of the word. We've heard a lot from the beginning on first day was the women's conference the men's conference and then all the things that we have shared together our speakers who gave seminars who gave goodwill messages and all the people that have spoken they have given us a word the word everything is coming from the background of God's word, God's will, God's way, and God's wisdom. Now, the believer needs to understand that we'll be doers of the word. These uh, meetings we've heard from Thursday until today, and we're finalizing and concluding tomorrow. It's not an evangelistic meeting. It's not a meeting to get people to the church or even into salvation. That may surprise you. When I, as a teacher, I go to a class to teach mathematics. I'm not teaching mathematics to make them make a decision for Christ. I'm there for that important subject that will affect their well-being, that will affect getting a job, that will affect manufacturing. And I'm teaching them so that they will have a part to play in making a change in their community. Am I outside the world? No. I'm in the world because God wants every man, every woman to know his part in subduing the world. If he's going to do that, he needs the mathematics that I teach. And that time, I'm not preaching the gospel in particular. I am preaching and I am explaining how they make it in life. They need that mass for engineering. They need that mass for constructing bridges. They need that mass in everything they do, engineering, whatever. They need it in accountancy and in world that is upside down, that cannot do well in accounting cannot do well in finance cannot do well in logic logical reasoning that world will collapse and there will be no way to preach the gospel when a teacher who teaches english is teaching english so that will be able to communicate it's not there preaching the gospel so this week as we have been here, we didn't come to influence people to this religion or that religion. We wanted to make people a better mother, a better father, a better husband, a better wife, a better professional person, a, pe a better administrator, a better governor, a better person in office, in governance. And uh, so you need to understand that the way we have approached everything we did from Thursday 
to Friday to Saturday, Sunday, and also as we are looking at this today, this one is not like evangelistic preaching. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Yes, we do. But Peter, what to do that? He was a fisherman. And we need fishermen in the nation. And yet Peter was see a fisherman who had not known the techniques and the principles and the practical things to do to really fish. And when you do the fishing, how do you sort out the good ones and the bad ones? If Peter did not know that, how do you get the ones that are good into a place? How do you put them in the fridge? How do you preserve them so that they will still be edible when the people come to buy if you don't know the different kinds of fish that you are giving to the people, how many of them are solved and are stopped with mercury in the river? And because of the mercury they have already absorbed in the river, it damages their health and they die prematurely. If the fisherman does not know all that, if he does not know the impurities that come into the sea because of at the spring of that sea, they did a lot of corrupting things, uh, you know, passing fishes and things there. Everything is flowing down, and he is fishing over there. No. The preaching of the gospel, yes, but the word that makes a man a fisherman. A hunter, a person who is walking in on the meat that comes to society. If the fellow does not know anything about all that, all he knows everywhere is goes. We are sinners, yes, we know. But those sinners are going to die earlier than they should die if we don't know how to have better people in society. That's why we're doing what we're doing, the change. Make us international that God will change every one of us. Amen. There's change in salvation that prepares you for heaven. There is change on earth that prepares you for how to live, how to act, how to think, how to interact, how to communicate, and how to concentrate on the things that benefit everybody in the nation. And so the believers and the Christians who are here as we go out, bring in everything you have heard, everything you have learned, and don't say, okay, I'm going to push him. You cannot push anybody to Christ. Teach them how to live better. Teach them how to rise higher than they have been. And then when the opportunity comes, you preach the gospel. And the gospel will save their souls in Jesus' name. I did a good, good amen. amen. So be ye doers of the word and not Hear us only, deceiving your own selves. Verse 23, in verse 23, for if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, how does that happen? Oh, they are talking about making society better. What I want is let them talk to me about heaven. You understand the insecurity? We have in the nation, almost in every nation, you understand? The health challenges we have in every nation, you understand? How people are living degraded lives and their lives are miserable because of the lives of other people around them. And you just tell them, believe on the Lord. Yes, we believe on the Lord. But all the people that surround us, they are acting in a way that will suppress our lives, destroy our lives. Just believe, believe, believe. Yes, we understand. But we need to understand how do we navigate through this world. We need that so that when the pressures come, 
when the persecutions come and when all those things attack our lives what do i do when i'm under stress what do i do when my brain is hot what do i do when i cannot sleep what do i do when i have a kind of disease that can easily be healed what do i do when i see that my lifestyle is hurting me that's where we come in and we say you know in change makers international this is how you adapt this adapt that that's not preaching the gospel but that is an important part of our life so that we will know how to live and how to preserve our lives so i appeal to all the christians all the believers who are here and everyone who has heard of this program change make us international it's not about religion it's not about the great commission as such but it's preparatory to the great commission i need to tell you that the educational system universities were brought about by christians because that is the practical thing we ought to do hospitals came up as a result of christian impact in our world that's not directly preaching the gospel repent believe and be saved but you see what the hospitals have done and all the gadgets we have all the new civilization we have look at all these lights all these lights the inventor originator Thomas Edison, he was said, you know, repent, 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 will not bring the bulbs, will not bring the electric light, and so understand, you have a part to play in the world in which you live, so that you will live a life that will benefit your neighbors all around here, you'll be a benefit. I said you'll be a benefit so that your life making you a better family man, a better family woman, you'll be able to influence in the right direction, in the positive direction, how we ought to live. And your life will attract other people unto the Lord. It says, if any man be a hearer of the word, and doeth it not, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. In verse 24, and then it says, For he beholdeth himself. He beholdeth himself. Is a welder, is not able to weld right, and he puts the gauge there. And he constructs the ceiling, but everything is falling apart. He is born again, he is saved, he has repented, he is not stealing, he is not, uh, you know, doing anything morally bad, but in his work, he has not become better. We're talking to him. We're saying there is a change that ought to take place. A change has taken place in your heart. Change must take place in your hand. The work you do. And you put your brain into that work. You put your mind into that work. But if anyone, a believer, I'm here. And he hears everything we have been saying about the change that ought to be made in our lives and in saying that one does not concern me it concerns you do you see in the bible talking to believe talking to builders that when you build the pavement you will build the railings very well that's bible and that so that when people are passing by they lean on each they will not fall so a great death and then die. God wants us to be balanced. Heart change. Hand change. Head change. 
a seeking faculty everything so that's the reason we're here this weekend and don't let anybody go out and say you know our pastor is not preaching the gospel anymore who said that a pastor is only now talking about this side and this side coming together of course God created us and we relate together and when I was a teacher of mathematics in a secondary school university school when I got to the class I didn't say Christians raise up your hand Muslims raise up your hand I taught everyone and when I you know helped them in tutorials in remedial teaching I didn't say are you a Christian are you a Muslim and then if you're a Muslim good no in all those things that relate to life we teach everyone how to become better and i still have that same vision let somebody shout amen, amen. <laughs> i was actually considering uh, not long ago brushing up my mats and going to you know some places like deeper life high school and lending a hand and saying this is how you do this and all the shortcuts that i got all these cent all these decades to go to them and say this one is not difficult that one is not difficult i've gone through it if god gives me time you'll find me appearing in schools <laughs> and i'll not be I'll not be seen when I get to the school, but God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that you say ever believe it. No, I'll say, what are you doing now? Quadratic equation, let's begin. And then I go through. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> be a man, be a woman available to help people lift them up. You can lift them up from sin, preaching the gospel you can lift lift them up from suffering from sickness you can lift them up from poverty be a man be a woman available to make the change i will i will, I will. I will. all right this video has been stirring a lot of controversies and when Pastor W.F. Kumi made this statement during the message some weeks ago. But then again, I'm not here to talk about a controversy, all right? Because he has already stated very clearly the reason for what he is doing. Everything that was said in the message that you just listened to is all that needs to be said about the reasons behind what he's doing. Though there may be other additional pieces that I have not been able to put together in this video because I don't want it to be too long. But the truth of the matter is, the man on a mission without a vision will end up in division. He has said the reason behind CMI, the reason behind Change Makers International, what it's all about, the vision and the goal of it. Nobody can fight the vision of a man. And this has nothing to do with church. According to what he said, this has nothing to do with uh, pushing the gospel this is a separate vision to reach the world to bring to the world a kind of a message that can change their life for the betterment of the society and the world at large because every one of us that lives on earth we need a better life to be happy the life we have right now if it is okay then there will be no need for us to be going to work fighting for change and many other stuff that you see the whole world is clamoring for today there is evidence that the world is not at its best and then god has already given us dominion over the earth and it's our responsibility to you know influence the environment that we find ourselves it's our responsibility and so he has mentioned that already we can no longer debate that fact what are the lessons we learn from this that's what we're here to discuss the lesson we learn from this is as a believer you shouldn't just be sitting down you know that all that is your responsibility is to preach the gospel and that alone well in your capacity as a believer yes your job is to bring people to christ but there is also the part of you 
showing the light of the gospel. There's also a part of you uh, living a life by which people will be transformed. A life that when men see, they will not be able to gain say. A life that people will look at and they will say, yes, your God is good. Let's go and serve your God. And most times, that kind of life is not opening your mouth verbally to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, but living the life that is inside of you, which is an impact you've got from accepting Jesus Christ. Do you understand what I mean? So you need to affect your environment. You need to lead people into a new life, a life that can make their reception of the gospel easier. For example, if the missionaries that came, if they didn't bring education, most of the understanding we have today, when we read the Bible and when we look at political issues, we look at uh, economic issues, we will not be able to reason properly if they did bring education to us. If there were no civilization, probably we will still be living in the, the primitive life we used to live. Probably we still have that life right now and we won't be able to discuss issues. You know, we can't discuss doctrine, we can't discuss Bible, we can't discuss uh, important subjects to humanity. We will not be able to fight for a better life in general. So, if you want the oncoming generation to live a life that is better than the one we currently have, and don't forget, it's also possible that you and I will be part of the next generation. Because, uh, frankly, our parents who didn't use phone in those days, they are part of our generation now that are using phones. Okay? So, it is one of the things that I learned from this message. I want us to uh, drop the noise and begin to look at what did I learn from this? How can I impart my environment? How can I change my world? How can I be a change agent? How will the light of the gospel in me shine without me opening my mouth to preach Jesus? How can I have dominion on the face of the earth? How can I influence the people around me? How will my life positively contribute to the life of another? This is a major lesson you need to learn from this video and shut the noise in your heart. Don't confuse anything with anything. This man has spent 60 years with the Lord Jesus. According to what he said, I think, earlier this year, that he became born again, uh, this year will make it 60 years, right? And uh, since I was born, over 30 years now, he has been preaching the gospel every week, week in, week out. And recently, he started the Global Crusade, where he preaches the gospel across the globe. You know, he has been to India, he has been to Cameroon, he has been to up many parts of Africa, right? And even other places, other continents, he has been there. And he's preaching the gospel, touching the lives of men without gospel. So he's such a man who has been preaching the gospel. He's saying that what he's currently doing is not a gospel, but a vision that was given to him, which he must fulfill. Okay? I don't think you need to fight it. You fighting the vision of such a man will not be nice. How will you be fighting a vision that is good? <laughs> God bless you.